So my strawberry tower has been going for just one day now. I've got all the plants in there from the garden and uh, along with some greenhouse plants that I did end up picking up just to fill in the blanks. And I apparently wouldn't have had to. I had lots of plants in the garden, way more than I thought I had. But uh, I did get the whole tower planted. Everything is growing and uh, my irrigation schedule must be working at least to some degree because nothing died overnight. So that's a good sign. Now the actual building of this thing, I will leave a link to that up top. That is not included in this video. This is just uh, more of putting this stuff together. So last time I didn't have enough hydroton to get this thing totally together. And what I ended up doing is just using a four liter ice cream pail and measuring out how much hydroton I needed to fill each layer, multiply it up. And it turns out I needed about 40 something uh, liters of hydroton. Uh, they comes in 50 liter bags, so I've got a little bit left over, but in any case, it filled it up with hydroton. Now, I wanted to go with Seascape for all of it, uh, for the whole tower. I've had really good success with a Seascape variety in hydroponics. Although uh, the greenhouse was sold out, so that didn't quite work out for me. I only got one Seascape plant. Albion and then uh, a miscellaneous variety. They don't even have this thing labeled. It just says ever bearing So I have no idea what this thing is, but I did put the tags inside with these plants So when I plant this thing I can go back and find out which variety is performing the best for future reference So maybe it's not a bad thing converting your plants from soil to hydroponics isn't a big deal What I end up doing here is for the greenhouse ones. I just take these cups flip them upside down I'll shake off as much dirt as I can in one pail, in another pail. I kind of have like a little workstation set up here. I'll take a pail of water and then I'll just dunk the plants in there and give them a good swish. And they come out pretty decent. There's not much dirt or debris left behind. And the little bit that there is left behind, it's not a big deal. We're just going to plant that anyway. If it ends up falling and the sediment ends up in the bottom of my 55 gallon drum, I do have a drain tap on the bottom there. So I'm just going to drain it out. I ended up doing the same for the garden plants too. Just give them a little wash out before I de decide to plant them. Now, a little word of when you are planting these things, if you do have runners, try to place your runners where you can reach another pot. If you can't reach another pot, it's not a big deal. Kind of leave the spot below it, kind of free, so the, you can guide the runner to the next spot. And if it never gets there and it starts to really open up, just take another cup of anything, hydroton, soil, uh, I personally like to use perlite because I find it's very easy to, to just move around and do with it what I want. But put a little cup underneath that spigot, rest your uh, runner on top of there, and as soon as it has roots about halfway down your cup, pull it out, snip it, and plant it in the missing segment. So you don't have to buy plants for the whole tower. You could probably get away with 10 plants, and within a month or two, you should have enough runners to, to propagate the whole thing. Something that is worth saying, if you've never planted strawberry plants before, just make sure that you don't bury the crowns and you do leave them above whatever your grow media is. You may notice that after you have your plants totally in, they might seem a little flippy floppy. That's totally okay. That's totally fine. Once they get a little established, they'll kind of anchor themselves back in. We're taking a root mass that was this wide before. It's just this now this narrow column and that's going to get put into our hydroton, which is not as good of an anchor as what it had previously. Now, I did want to use Master Blend Fertilizer for this. However, I'm not going to be wasteful. I do have a bunch of general hydroponic stuff that I do need to get rid of, so I'm going to use that up first. I'm also using this stuff to water my entire garden, so it should be used up pretty quick, and then I can go to a Master Blend. What I'm going to end up doing here is just using the tomato formula and dilute it half with water. The garden's going to get full strength, so I'm just going to pump over half a barrel, fill the rest with water, uh, make sure the pH is good still, and then uh, let it do its thing. Oh, and for those of you that are taking a look at the links down below and go, hey, that's a different one, it is not. I did end up painting them. I wish I would have found it in white. I wasn't so fortunate, so I ended up painting this whole tower just so it all matched. It would have driven the wife nuts if the top one was terracotta and the bottom one was some kind of off-white. For the irrigation schedule right now, I've got uh, 15 minutes on and 60 minutes off during the day. And then when the sun sets, I have it switching to 15 minutes on and then 90 minutes off. I don't know if that's the right numbers, so please don't quote me on that. If you're not sure and you're using Hydroton, just turn it on and leave it on. Or uh, 
adjust it on a day when you're kind of around and if you see the plant start to wilt you know it's not enough as far as too much the first time i ever built a tower like this i had it on 24 7 the entire growing season and i didn't see any ill effects of root rot or any of that stuff so it worked out for me the first time i just think right now i'm going to end up losing a heck of a lot to evaporation because there's quite a long way for it to drip and the one i did have running all the time everything went down the center and there was hydrotin and everything there was nothing kind of dripping that big gap where it can evaporate so We'll see how it goes with the schedule. If it works like this, I'm probably just going to end up leaving it. I don't think I'm going to see if I can pace it back or, or anything like that. Just a word of caution, if you are using the exact stuff I'm using here, I did notice a couple of the layers got plugged with the hydrogen that ended up being like the perfect size to kind of plug the whole gap where it's supposed to go down to the next level. If that does happen to you, just use your finger to poke up and move that hydrogen around, or you could use like a barbecue skewer, a toothpick, whatever just to make sure that those holes are open. So definitely after you've got the whole thing set up and planted, run the irrigation and make sure water is making it to every level all the way around. Now, if you end up building a similar type of hydroponics vertical garden structure or whatever and you wanna follow along, I will do my best to update how this thing is going. Although I'm not gonna just make content on it. If there's problems, I will address the problems or if there's questions from other users, I will do my best to answer all of them. Feel free to leave any questions or comments down below.